Hello, my name is Kathy Wynn, and I'm a Bitfix Technical Advisor based out of Atlanta, Georgia. You'll see my QR code on the lower left-hand corner, so please feel free to scan that to connect me via LinkedIn. I will be going over some Bitfix patching best practices on today's video. So as we all know, patching is more important and more challenging to keep up with than ever. It's recommended to implement patching best practices as it will drive efficiency and eliminate disruptions during your patch cycles. Most importantly, patching best practices will keep your endpoint secure. So with that, let's jump into some best practices. So one of the first things uh, I want to talk about is um, that there is a sequential order that certain patches should go in. Um, on the screen, you'll see that servicing stack updates should always go before cumulative updates. Um, servicing stack updates provides fixes to the servicing stack, and servicing stack is the component that installs Windows updates. These updates improve the reliability of the update process to mitigate potential issues while installing the latest quality updates and feature updates. So at times you'll see that a cumulative update is not relevant until a servicing stack update has been applied. Um, so uh, with that, servicing stack should go first, uh, followed by microcode updates, then application updates uh, such as Adobe Flash, .NET updates, then cumulative updates. Uh, the next best practice that I have listed up there, uh, don't create baselines in the master action site. Um, if you create in the master action site, that basically means that all endpoints uh, will evaluate that baseline and not all baselines are needed uh, for every single endpoint. So if, uh, it's best practice to not create baselines in the master action site, create them in a site um, that applies to the endpoints um, that you would like to apply that baseline to. Make use of custom filters to shortcut your search time. Um, if you're creating a baseline and you have certain um, exclusions or certain patches you will include, um, you can use custom filters to kind of make your search time faster. Um, let me go ahead and just pull up my Big Fix console and go down to my custom filters. Here I have a couple of examples to show you. Uh, one example is my .NET custom filter. Basically, these are just uh, patches or fixlets that has the name .NET in it. This can, I can go to this filter to kind of identify all the .NET patches or .NET installs that are needed um, for my endpoints or group of endpoints, and I can go through them, figure out which ones I need to include, which ones I need to exclude. It's basically a faster uh, way for me to search um, for certain uh, patches. I also have another one here that's called fixlets that require, require manual, patch, manual caching. Um, here is basically anything with an action, a fixlet with an action that contains manual BES caching required. I use this filter so I can quickly see what um, fixlets I have out there that needs a manual um, caching. So I can go ahead and do that prior to uh, patching, prior to my uh, patch cycle starting so that um, I, I can eliminate any disruptions uh, during patching. So now back to um, my my slide, the next one on the list is restart before and after deployment or monitor the restart needed fixlets um, to see what needs to be restarted. Um, sometimes some 
patches do not become relevant until um, your endpoint is uh, rebooted. So basically, um, here, not all environments um, can restart before or after a deployment. We do have fixlets in the console. I'm going to go back and to the console. Um, under fixes and tasks, if I did a search on restart needed, there will be some uh, fixlets that come up. There should be three. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on my show non-relevant content up there. And there's three here. Um, basically, you can use these fixlets um, to monitor your endpoints to see which one needs a restart. You can also have a report automatically sent to you um, to show you machines that still uh, need a, still has a pending restart a few days before uh, your next patch appointment cycle. Remember to sync baselines. Um, make sure to sync your baseline so that you get the most updated uh, content uh, in, in case one of your fixed lists um, was updated. So syncing your baseline is a best practice, um, it, but it also depends on your patching process, right? So if you are um, using this particular baseline to kind of standardize what gets uh, applied to all your endpoints or across um, your environment, you may not want to sync it. Um, that way things don't get out of sync. Um, like let's just say for instance, you have patch group one that went on Monday and everything went okay. Patch group two goes on Tuesday and if you left it unsynced, then you have the same, uh, the same patches, the same fixes and tasks will apply. But if you synced it, then it may not, uh, it, it's gonna be out of sync. The same things are, are now different. Um, so it really depends on your patching process. If you don't sync it, it's easier to maybe troubleshoot and figure out why one patch group was okay um, and the second one um, had issues. Um, but again, it all depends on your patch process. Um, to get the most updated um, content to, or, or make sure that your fixlets are the most updated, you, you do want to sync your baselines. Another best practice, pre-cache to speed up patching. Um, several ways to do this. I'm going to go ahead and bring up my Big Fix console again. There is a wizard um, under wizards all wizards, and there is a wizard called file pre-cache wizard. You can use this wizard to go ahead and kind of walk through these um, steps to get your files cache on the BES server and BES relays. Um, another way to uh, pre-cache is when you're taking action on the execution tab, there is a checkbox here to start client downloads before constraint are satisfied. Now, if you are um, installing a patch or, or, or setting or, or taking action on a baseline right away, um, this is probably not going to. This is this doesn't really apply. But if um, you're scheduling an action, then you can check this box to make sure that um, all of the files get cache locally onto the endpoint prior to um, patch schedule. That way everything is already um, pre-cached there. Um, another thing I wanna say is that you would like to, you probably wanna report or, or make sure that your endpoints do have enough disk space um, if you were to check this box, um, just to make sure that um, it can um, cache all the files that it needs on that end. On, on those endpoints. Lastly, do you actually need a relay at all? Um, starting from Big Fix uh, 9511, 
the BigFix client includes an, a feature uh, named PureNet. Basically, that allows to share a uh, that feature allows to share binary files among clients located in the same subnet. So you may uh, have a, an office that has low bandwidth that requires a need to um, have peer-to-peer -peer sharing. So there is a feature now um, that was started in 9.5.11 um, that you can actually enable um, to share those files. Here are some useful resources for BigFix on this page. Um, you have BigFix.com uh, where you can find offerings, features, you can schedule a demo. Um, our support.bigfix.com page is basically a landing page um, with all BigFix related uh, things on there. You can open up a support ticket. Um, we have some uh, a link to webinars, events, um, documentation. If you need documentation, you can get to uh, that documentation page by going to support.bigfix.com, and that's the official HCL um, documentation on that page. Um, there's also forum.bigfix.com. That is a great place to get um, qu your questions answered um, from our BigFix community. Um, it's very active. We're also on LinkedIn and Facebook. Also, remember, do not hesitate to reach out to me on LinkedIn if you have any additional questions. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video was helpful to you.